Good morning. A very warm welcome to you as we come to share together in our worship this morning. And as we do so, we turn to our Lord in prayer. We pray together as we say the prayer that Christ has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. As we share together in our worship in the singing of the next song, I really would encourage you to listen to the song, sing along if you know the words. The words will be there, but to take a special note of the words that we sing, as it reminds us again of who our generous God is, as we sing together, Generous Giver.
it really is a beautiful song and it introduces our theme of generosity. But the moment I mention the word generosity, we immediately begin to think of money. But money is not what generosity is all about. Money might resource our generosity, but generosity is far more than just money. Generosity is a trait of godliness. During the last months of COVID lockdown, our church and our church members have been extremely generous. I remember that when lockdown began, a number of people offered their time and their gifts to be able to help those who couldn't help themselves. People offered to go and do shopping or take people medication for those who felt at risk going out or weren't able to go out and get to the shops that they needed. Our church, through the resources of the people that, of what the people had given, were able to be very generous in what we did as a church. And so some of the things we did was we were able to support six casual workers at the Paul Mignano Center, each giving each of them a month salary. We collected money and groceries from our generous members, being able to feed and help seven families of foreign nationals who weren't able to access funding from the government. During this time, we also managed to pack 20 family food packs for poor and unemployed people in the Cliffontaine Methodist Church in that society. We were also able to help our rural school children through our Axiom Outreach Project and help them with data and being able to help them in their schooling. We have also, over these past months, managed to make, as a community, over a thousand litres of soup. That's a tonne of soup and hundreds of boiled eggs, which have been able to feed the hungry and those who have been in need. During COVID, we've also managed to continue to pay our lay staff and our members have continued to give generously and faithfully through EFTs, or through the offerings, and even in kind, in offering their services in the way that they could. And we have plans as a church to continue to be generous. We are part of a very generous community. From our church, we want to say a very big thank you to all our members that enable us to do what we do within the community. But I remind you again, Generosity is a trait of godliness. Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 6 encourages us to strive or to pursue godliness. Godliness means being God-like, taking on his characteristics, being transformed in our hearts and in our lives to become more and more like Jesus. And our God is an amazingly generous God. That was reflected in the song that we sang earlier. But our God is generous in creation. We live in a world that is teeming with so many different kinds of animals and birds, fish, so many different insects. When we look at nature, we become so aware of so many vibrant colors. We see different landscapes. We see amazing rivers. We're aware of majestic mountains and we become aware of a generous God in creation. Our God is also generous in grace and mercy. We are accepted, we are received, far more than we ever deserve to be, yet God opens his arms to us and extends to us his grace and his mercy. Our God is generous in salvation, even to the point of personal pain and death. As we remember, it was Jesus who sacrificed his life so that we might have eternal life. And we all remember John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not die but have eternal life. Our God is a giving, generous God who has a generous heart and it's a heart that we need to continue to cultivate and grow in each of us 
as we seek to become more and more like our God. We all know that our worldly system works on a currency that is so different from the gospel. The currency of the world is all based on what we have and how much we own. And so often we translate that into monetary terms. But God's kingdom doesn't work that way, doesn't work on the same principles. In this world system, my generosity is determined by how much I have. But in God's kingdom, my generosity is determined by my attitude and my faith. So let's turn to the gospel reading for today as we read Mark chapter 12, verses 41 to 44. The widow's offering. As Jesus sat near the temple treasury, he watched the people as they dropped in their money. Many rich people dropped in a lot of money. Then a poor widow came along and dropped in two little copper coins worth about a penny. He called his disciples together and said to them, I tell you that this poor widow put, in, put more in the offering box than all the others. For the others put in what they had to spare of their riches, but she, poor as she is, put in all she had. She gave all she had to live on. Picture the scene. Jesus and his disciples are in the temple courts. They're probably sitting opposite where the treasury is. And there they can see all the people gathered around bringing their offerings into the temple placing their offerings into trumpet-shaped receptacles. And as people are doing that, they see the rich people or the wealthier people putting in lots of money. Into the scene comes this widow. As Jesus says, a poor widow. And she comes and puts in two copper coins, minimal in comparison to what the other people have put in. A couple of coins in comparison to the other amounts of money, but maybe just enough to buy some bread. Now, what do we know about this woman? Well, we do know some interesting facts and important facts. We know that she's a widow. In the context of the time, there was no pension for widows. There was no social security. So either she lived by herself, herself and gained little income, or hopefully she was supported by her children. Scripture tells us that she was poor. And it would seem that when they mentioned poor in Scripture, they meant that she was poor. And we know that she has these two copper coins. According to Jesus, this is all she had. Given her circumstances, she comes and she gives all she has. What enabled her to do that? Jesus is not looking at what people give. Jesus is looking at people's hearts. She had a spirit and an attitude of generosity, and it's given from deep within her heart in what she gives. By faith, that which seemed to be the least value to God was of the greatest value. That is God's currency. Generosity is an issue far more of the heart than it is of the money that we give. The story is told about Alexander the Great, who was riding past a beggar at the side of the road, and the beggar risking everything shouts out to the emperor and begs for alms. And the emperor, being who he was, puts into his pocket and takes out a number of gold coins and tosses them to the beggar. His courtier, astonished at Alexander's generosity, commented, Sir, copper coins would adequately meet the need of a beggar. Why give him gold? Alexander responded in a royal fashion and said, Copper coins would suit the beggar's need, but gold coins suit Alexander's giving. I'm reminded of Wesley 
when he spoke about generosity and giving, he spoke about and he said, earn all you can, save all you can, and give all you can. Generosity must come from the heart, not just from the wallet. But the thing about generosity is that it doesn't just happen. Generosity needs to be thought through, needs to be planned, and then needs to be executed. So here are some suggestions. Why don't you set aside something of what you have? Decide, think it through, work out what it is. So if it's your time, set aside how much time do you have to give? What time can you make? Or maybe it would be something of your talents. How much of your talent can you set aside? Can you be generous with? What is it that you need to do? Maybe it is your money. How much money can you set aside? And what are you going to do with that? We need to think it through. Secondly, we then need to decide what we're going to do with what we've set aside. How are we going to be generous with that which we've set aside? What am I going to do with the time that I've set aside? Am I going to go and spend some time with a lonely person? Or am I going to go and do something for somebody else that needs it? Am I going to commit my time to what? Work out what it is. How can I use my talents? If I've chosen to set my talent aside, how can I use that to be generous into God's kingdom? What am I going to do with my money? What am I going to support? Who am I going to support with the money that I have set aside? Thirdly, we then need to, if you like, set markers or maybe even set goals, but put a time frame to it. And so we set goals to achieve what we've set aside and what we're going to do with it. We need to think it through, we need to plan it, and then we need to execute it. If we're going to strive for godliness, we need to plan it. We need to exercise our faith and execute our plan. And as we do that, the transformation of our hearts into being more generous will slowly begin to happen. Plan to be generous today, for it is a trait of godliness. Let us pray. Lord, in all your generosity, you have blessed each and every one of us so richly and so deeply. We are grateful, Lord, for all that you've given us. We pray, Lord, we would search our hearts and that, Lord, we would set aside that which we have. We would plan it and that, Lord, we would seek to be generous with what you've given us. Lord, we thank you for our church. We thank you for the members of our church who in so many ways have been generous over these past months. We give you all the glory for that. We pray, Lord, that as we continue to plan to be generous, you would keep shaping our hearts, keep transforming us so that we may take on your character and become more God-like. For generosity is a trait of godliness. Amen. As we sing our final song, it's a hymn that is well known as we surrender all to Jesus. All to Jesus I surrender All to Thee I freely give I will ever love and trust
I surrender all, all to Thee, blessed Saviour, I surrender all. Receive this blessing as we conclude our time together. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all until we meet again. Amen.